My dear viewer, when the best video game in the history of video games gets the best DLC in the history of DLCs, well, the result is apparent. Let's get started. We do not know how to deal with the uh, gravity slam, so that's a thing. We're, we are getting more damage out of this. Out of this hammer. My R2 didn't come out because the game is an asshole like that. Interesting. Yeah, I can't. I, there's nothing I can do at that point. I'm gonna pray for strike here. A game is eating my inputs. That's the second time it's happened this fight. Don't know why you're doing that video game. I need this fucking prayerful strike, please. Thank you. Okay. This happens. Okay, I got hit again. Okay, dead. Okay, so when I'm when I'm attacking him and he does point blank gravity slash into high rocks, I don't have an answer for that. Because blocking it gets me broken, dodging it is nigh impossible at that range. So that's a problem I need to deal with. Because I know how to dodge rocks. If I don't get hit by the first slash, if I get hit by the first slash, we have a timing problem. See this? It wasn't point blank, so I can dodge it, then I can do my thing to the right. Oh my god, I got hit. I don't understand rock. He did stomp and didn't do the actual stomp combo. What is this face? One.
Wow, I was too far away for the counter. I didn't that's my bad I didn't realize the attack he was doing I'm running out of stamina man I'm running out of fucking stamina I'm running out of fucking stamina let's drop the 15% guard boost the guard counter damage and go back to the guard this the shield cuz i need to be able to block a bit more it's 100 damage less i don't think it's worth it i'd rather have the block Why didn't it? Ah, oh, I was stamina. I'm dead here. There's a possibility I'm gonna die. There you go. We weren't we weren't doing that bad. The thing is that he did point blank gravity slash, and I couldn't dodge it, which meant which meant I was on the back foot for rocks. And as you can see, being on the back foot for rocks meant that I got hit by it once. So, and that completely killed the timing for the blocks.
see that? Point blank rocks. Son of a bitch, point blank rocks flat. Doing that point blank is such a fucking piece of shit move. Good transition. Come down. He didn't come down. He'll come down now. Jesus Christ, those quick left swipes are so hard to react to on second phase. Because if I block them, I'm, I have to block the, the holy shit again. Ah, it's difficult. Those quick left swipes are difficult. Fucking Christ, we're done. See, it's so it's, bro. Oh, for fuck's sakes, you're doing all the gravity shit. Oh my God, bro. Those quick swipes are... Oh, the game buffered my input. Thank God he did stun. Yep, he's doing the same fucking bullshit quick swipe that I can't react to. Point blank rocks. Good luck dodging them, yeah. I 
delay. Very well. Nothing to it. He did hit. He did point blank that like the dashes. I tried to dodge it. I got hit by everything. Comboed to to death. Holy shit, man. Holy fucking shit. This is a hard fight, man. But I think it's hard for the wrong reasons. I don't like the way they designed this fight, which is unfortunate because I don't like the way they did Rata Beast either, which would put Elden Ring on two bad fucking final boss fights, which really makes me upset. But, but alas, we're here to beat it and beat it we shall. Rock's point blank is a piece of shit. Never dodge a stump backwards. Never dodge a stomp backwards. Never. I couldn't see. I couldn't see, so I did not identify it as the attack that I could block and counterattack. I don't know where I lost my rhythm, but at some point I lost my rhythm. And that's okay. Little by little, we're getting better. 
we will... F it won't be too long now, but all the flashiness of the boss fight makes me lose my rhythm very, very quickly, which is unfortunate. Point blank rocks like this is a fucking piece of shit. It should not happen. He's pulled out all the fucking stuff. I can't believe that he punished my punish. We're not gonna take the first attack, we're just gonna block, take the second. Da, the delay, well done. We need to get the fuck out of here. Run, 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 just run. Just run, just run, just run, just run, just run.
the delay. I fucked up here. And thus, we have been victorious. Remembrance of a God and a Lord. Oh my fucking God. With one flask left and a quick change of strategy, we have defeated. Mikola the Kind. All right. Let's take a look and explore. Let's pick up the grace. Wow. I am... Shit, man. Shit. Holy fucking shit. Give me a moment. This has been... I need to talk about this. Hold up. I need to talk about this. My dear viewer, go get a drink. Go get a drink, because I need to talk about it. My blood is fucking boiling. Hands down, the most difficult boss ever in any Souls game for any reason. Um, but I did not like it. So we're going to have to unpack this. Number one, we beat the boss by learning the boss. We beat the boss by understanding the boss and using strategies to counter the boss. We learned phase, first phase almost perfectly. Almost fucking perfectly. Second phase, it took us longer. But God fucking damn it did we learn it. We figure out that second phase has the same basic moves as first phase plus the light pillars so the dodges were the same the punishes were the same so with that understanding we got to a basic progress on phase two and then his bullshit attacks his after images are extremely dangerous because they are extremely conniving. Because at the end of the day, his after images were dealing no damage to my blocks and barely any stamina damage while blocking. So I knew that I could block all of the after images. With that understanding, I picked up this shield because this shield has a high guard boost at 76. But it also has 84% holy damage negation. So I was able to block a lot of pillars with this. Once we started blocking, once we started figuring out what I could block, I started understanding what I could guard counter. And once we understood what could be guard countered, we switched to this hammer, which gives me better guard counters. We use the Swordsman Talisman to increase the damage of our counters, 
but the damage wasn't that big of a deal. So we started, we went back to the Great Shield Talisman in order to improve the blocks even better. Why was that important? Because of stamina management. This boss does not let you play. You do not get a turn in this boss. So as the player, you have to steal your turns. There is nothing you can do in this boss that will give you a net positive. Everything is going to be either a negative or a neutral. That's where Prayerful Strike comes in, in the first phase. Because in the second phase, there is nothing I can do about Prayerful Strike. Combining the necessity of guard counters with the Black Steel's Hammer, which, by the way, I love this weapon, and the, uh, and the Great Shield, the Black Steel Great Shield, we were able to solidify the punishment of very difficult situations. Like, Gravity Slash into Rocks was followed up by the After Image Lion Claw. And that's great, because I could block all of that shit and then come back with a guard count. The most important thing in this boss fight, when you're doing it solo, is stamina management. Because you are always on the move, and you are always blocking. With this build, with Strength Faith, the most important thing is stamina management. And then, shout out to Latest Armor. Because it slightly strengthened the attack following a dodge roll or a backstep. Here, the important part was the dodge roll. I don't know how much more damage I was dealing. I don't care if it was 15%, 10%, or 5%. I don't give a fuck. The fact of the matter remains that most of my punishes were rolling R1s. Because I, I did not have time to do anything else. So taking into consideration that most of my punishes were rolling R1s, I, this gave me a shit ton of damage. This increased damage, combined with the increased damage from the guard counters from this motherfucker, because this, this thing was putting like 200 damage and additional stance damage. I was able to one time break Radon's stance, with the af the holy aftershock of the guard of the guard counter and not the guard counter itself which means that that aftershock deals stance damage now i don't know if it deals additional stance damage or if the weapon splits the guard counter stance damage between the main hit and the aftershock i don't know but the fact of the matter remains that the aftershock has stance breaking capabilities and that was very important because you get all the damage and then the stance break. After understanding this and making the correct changes in my equipment, we have reached the point where I had to get good. My dodges had to be crispy and I had to understand the attacks that were coming by removing from my vision the light pillars. That's right. Ignore the light pillars. The light pillars will never be an, a, an issue if you dodge phase 2 the same way you dodge phase 1, which is towards the Radon and to the side that he is attacking. You always dodge towards the enemy and towards the side that he is attacking. If the enemy is attacking from the right hand side, you dodge to the left. If the enemy is attacking from the left-hand side, you dodge to the right. Basic souls. And then after that, it's a bit of experience. When Radon does the meteor, much like his his fight in the base game, the best way to dodge to, re to meet the meteor is to get the fuck out. You unlock and you run. You run. And you keep on running until you see that motherfucker land. And when he lands, you run more. And then you stop. That's the way to dodge the thing. Now, Mikolas Light, where Radan goes up into the air with his arms outstretched and comes down with a huge barrier. The moment I found out that attack was pure holy damage, the moment this motherfucker with the shield started shining. Because I can tank that shit. 
And then I realized that after tanking that shit, I get a free R2. And then I realized that as he's going up into the air, I get another free R2. Jump R2, to be exact. So the, the jump R2 from before and the jump R2 from the after all started stacking together and BAM, motherfucker! We got ourselves stance breaking capability. All of that combined got me the win. Also, I've been fighting this dude for like five to six hours. So at new game, at standard new game, basic difficulty with a rune level 150 character, no summons whatsoever. It took me about six hours to beat this motherfucker, which is about the same time that it took me to beat Melania. The difference is that when I was fighting Melania, I knew less about the game than I know now. Now I know a shit ton about the game, so I was able to use that information to devise strategies. Also, I have the ability to count stance damage in my head. I know how much an R2 does, I know how much an R2 does, I know how much a jumping R2 does, and I know how much a guard counter does. I also know how much prayerful strike does. So I was able to count stands in my head in order to get better breaks. Now, the problem with that is that with Radon's long-ass motherfucking combos, the fight keeps going and you have to keep dodging, but his stance keeps on regenerating. If I would, if I would have had to fight him for the next hour, I would have brought in throwing knives into the equation. Dodge, 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 throw a throwing knife real quick, keep dodging to keep his stance damage from regenerating. But that would have been a really advanced technique, and that would have taken me a while to master. So I'm glad I didn't have to bring that out. Mikolas Great Rune, really good idea, completely useless, because the grab is absolutely easy to dodge. So nice idea, poor execution. So that's how we beat this motherfucker. Now, mechanically speaking... And in the ways to defeat this motherfucker, this is a fantastic boss fight. Absolutely no one can say that this is a poorly designed boss fight. The attacks make sense. They're bullshit? Absolutely. But they make sense. And they make sense in phase one, and they make sense in phase two. And there are ways to get around the attacks using everything that we have at our disposal. At our disposal. Excuse me. Even solo. Even if it is mechanically well designed, and even if it is a good fight, it is a good challenge, it's good difficulty, I don't like the boss fight. I think that this boss fight was a huge, gigantic missed opportunity. I understand the lore reasons for the Consort Radan. If we go back to the lore we had of Mikola and the Shardbearers, Mikola had a thing for Radon. I don't know if it was a romantic thing or a brotherly thing. I don't know. But Mikola had a thing for Radon. So it makes very much sense that he would go for Radon. As for the reason why he needed Mog, I don't know. Maybe it was because of proximity. Maybe it was because Mog was an omen and that has links to the horn scent in some way or another. I do not know. But the fact that they took two existing demigods, combined them together like 80% Radan, 20% Mog, and then just slapped on Mikola on second phase, I didn't like that at all. First of all, Radan continues to be my favorite boss fight in the base game. We fight Radan at his weakest, with his mind rotten by the Scarlet Rot. His legs not working, depending on his gravity magic and his trusty steed Leonard. Even at that point, even at his lowest, Radan was holding back the stars in order to keep the destiny, the fate of the Imperians from moving forward. We fight him in his festival. One to one, well I did. You can summon all the fuckers if you want. But the point is that we fight him in this fest in his festival and we give him peace. And we provide him the death of a true red main warrior. All of that is completely undermined in this fight. 
they pulled him out, they recycled him, and they have us fight him in his prime, I guess. But much like we fought Ishin in his prime in Sekiro, and that was a really good motherfucking fight because Ishin was sick, so they showed us his prime. With Radon, it's different because we gave closure to Radon. So now they pulled him out again, and on top of it, after we defeat him, he needs to get the help of a god because Mikola now has ascended as a god by going through the gate of divinity in order to help him. That's not Radon. You don't help Radon. Radon helps you. And because of all of that, I feel that Radon is undermined and I really did not enjoy the the boss fight. Not mechanically, but in story-wise and lore-wise. I understand why the lore is what it is. I accept it because it makes sense within the word, within the world, excuse me, but I don't like it. I think that there was a huge missed opportunity here. Now, with that out of my chest, and now that I have calmed down from the sheer excitement of fucking up this bitch, let's see what else we got. Because I see, like, let's see what else we got. Did we do the grace? Okay, let's touch the grace first of all. What's this grace called? The gate of divinity. Makes sense. All right, there's this glowy golden thing. Okay. Touch memory. So we get a memory. All right, let's see. Oh, we're going to see the memory. Okay. Circlet of Light. I'm not going to lie to you. That wasn't much. The Circlet of Light which adorned Mikola's head as he returned in divine aspect. It has begun to fade into nothingness. Slightly boosts intelligence, faith, and arcane while also boosting the power of Mikola's light. This circlet was to be the very foundation upon which Mikola's Age of Compassion was, would be built, should it have ever come to pass. I like the sound of Age of Compassion, but I don't think he was doing that shit in the right way. Okay. In their childhood, Mikola saw in Radon a lord, his strength and his kindness, that stood in stark contrast with their afflicted self. And so Mikola made his heartfelt wish that Radon would one day be his king consort. Okay, again, like we said before, he had a thing for Radon. It, it seems to be pretty platonic. It seemed to be like not, not really romantic. It seemed like he liked the kindness in Radon as general. And then according to this, he wanted to build an age of compassion. From the memory, we definitely see that that's his wish. He really wanted this. He planned for this. So again, lore-wise, makes perfect sense. It's fine. I don't think it's good, though. It gives one point to faith, intelligence, and arcane. One each. Okay. Okay.
All right, what else do we got here? Let's use my last sippy. All right, let's go to the Gate of Divinity. See what's up here. I can't summon Tor. Are you not going to let me go into the Gate of... Ooh. Ooh. I disagree with this. Oh, man. Oh, man. I feel like this boss fight is filled with missed opportunities. Hold up. Hold up. Hold the fuck up. Oh, you know what? Let me pick up my souls. My zero souls. There you go. Hold up. What does Saint Trina have to say about this? Hold up. Wait. Wait. Saint Trina, I have done the thing. We have done the thing, Saint Trina. We are successful. Okay. She's dead. Of course she would be dead. She's the other half of fucking Mikola. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Look, she fell from the... Oh, yeah. Totally dead. What do you give me? Saint Trina's Blossom. Of course she would die. As soon as I kill Mikola, St. Trina is the other part of Mikola. They're dead. Even though she, Mikola separated and cast her away, they're still the two, two beings of the same individual. St. Trina's life withered and fell as, a, as fleeting as the seasons. At her last, she left a single water lily. Slightly boosts max FP. Despite the velvety purple hue of the flower, the flower is in no way poisonous. It merely blooms in quietude. Oh, wow. Eleven. So this is about 5% increase. Interesting. Okay, so how does this look? Oh, that's fucking cute. And how does this look? Oh, that looks fucking good. Oh, that's good for Paladin build. I fucking love how it looks as is right now. Holy fucking shit, this is incredibly good. Shit, we're gonna we're gonna do something about this. Oh yeah, we're gonna do something with this. Fuck my life, that's really fucking good. Is this it? I believe this is it. I believe this is it. Let's go see what the remembrance gives us. Equipment. Do I get equipment? I do! Oh shit, I get more Radon shit? Helm warmed by Radon in his younger years. Proudly displaying the heroic red hair, it is fitting attire for a lion. When Melania, Bleed of Mikola, let the rot flower blossom in Aeonia, Radon heard a murmur in his ear. Mikola awaits thee, O promised consort. Ho ho! What? That's what, oh, we gotta go way back. We gotta go way back to the fucking, one of the initial trailers of the base game. Melania and Radon are fighting to a stalemate. And Melania, in order to not lose, to take the stalemate, lets the, the rot flower blossom in where they were fighting, which I presume was Kaled, but I don't know. Let's the the flower blossom. 
And we see that Melania does say something to Radan, whispers something to Radan. Mikola awaits thee, O promised consort. That's really good. I like that. That changes a lot of things, in my opinion. You get the little horns from the com from the combination of with with uh, Maul. Okay, I like that. The fact that we get that little bit. Oh, that's I like that. That's better. Oh, we get four things. Great sword of Radan, Lord. Great sword of Radan, Light. Light of Mikola, 72 faith. Holy shit. Alright, let's get started. Waste 9. So it split up both of Radon's greatswords. It seems like they're. These are hefty swords, man. They got different. Alright, let's read. A great sword of black steel wielded by Radon in his youth. What is it? A colossal sword. Okay. A pair, a pair of weapons decorated with a lion mane motif. These were in his possessions immediately before his triumph over the stars. The swords of a lord who does not rely on physical strength and gravity alone. The Ash of War's promised consort imbue the two great swords with the light of Mikola, then deliver a slashing attack accompanied by columns of light. Additional inputs allow for up to two follow-up attacks. Okay, these are his basic attacks in phase two. Fit slash slash, colors of light, pillars of light, excuse me. And what about the great sword of Radan Light? Great swords of black steel wielded by Radan and his move, a pair of weapons, they're both paired weapons, interesting. These were in his possessions immediately before his triumph over the stars. Okay. Assume a luminous form and leap forward to deliver a downward slash at the speed of light. This attack will be followed up by an additional light attack. Charge to increase the power of the skill and number of follow-up attacks. This seems to be the after images attacks. Okay. Alright. Light of Mikola. 48 FP at 2 slots with 72 faith requirement. Makes, per makes perfect sense. The strength of Mikola upon his deific return. Wielded as an incantation. Annihilates foes with a pillar of light. Mikola sought to accept all that was and would be. But found one that refused to be embraced. That's me. No wonder as one god and one king consort. Is all the world needs. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see if anything changes here. Is it going to be the exact same thing? It's going to take me to the exact same place. Yep, no change. Okay, if this is the case, let's go back home. 
bestial sanctum, the home of strength faith. All right, so that's the DLC. I've already explained to you my opinions as to the final boss, both mechanically and lore-wise. In general, Shadow of the Earth Tree, I think, has been a magnificent experience. What is it, like 40 hours? We did it, no summons. We did it learning the bosses, and we did it exploring the whole map. I must have missed a shit ton of things, but I believe we got most of the important ones. We explored all of the Land of Shadow. We defeated what I believe is every boss, because I don't know where else they could hide a boss. And um, we got most of the Scatter Tree fragments. We beat... We beat this at level 18 scatter tree. I thought the DLC was incredibly good. Incredibly good. Um If I'm if I were to do this right now, best boss fight is Ralana. Second best boss fight is Mesmer. Third best boss fight is Bale. But he's not here because I consumed it. That's my top three. After that. After that. It's going to be. Midra. Radon. And Dancing Lion. Pretty much tied for fourth place. I guess actually. let's. I'm going to give Radon the fourth place. Yeah we'll do Radon fourth. Midra fifth. Or Dancing Lion sixth. That's my top six, for sure. For sure. Petrescent Knight. Mother of Fingers. Um, This bitch, I don't remember her name. Romina. And Sunflower. I'm indifferent about. Neither of these had any kind of movie scene or cutscene to explain to me what they are. Mother of Fingers, I think I beat on the first try. I think she's too simple. Romina and Sunflower, I beat on second try. Petrescent Knight took me a bit longer, but again, very relatively simple. These were these four are simple boss fights that really didn't say much to me. Especially Mother of Fingers, with the gigantic lore implications that it has. I think this... Mother of Fingers was a wasted opportunity as well. But Mother of Fingers, Petrescent Knight, Shadow Sunflower, and Romina of the Saint of Bud. Uh, the Saint of the Bud. Uh, basically are my indifferent bosses. Okay. After that... Commander Gaius, the Wild Boar Rider, absolute dog shit fight, absolute the worst thing ever. That's what I'm saying. Dog shit fucking fight. Hated this fight with a passion. Fucking fuck this fight. Will always be bottom fight of the DLC. Top 1, Relana. Top 2, Mesmer. Top 3, Bale. 4, Radon. 5, Midra. Six, Dancing Lion. Seven, eight, nine, and ten is Mother of Fingers, Petrus and Knight, Shadow Sunflower, and Romina in any order. I do not care about them. I'm very indifferent. M, always last is fuck this guy. Will always be last. Piece of shit fight. Did not enjoy it. The final thing I'm going to say about the DLC is this. We have to ask ourselves a question. How much harder can Souls games get? The Radon boss fight is the epitome of difficulty, in my opinion. It can be done by a single person. I've done it. I'm not particularly good at the game, but I am knowledgeable of the game. 
So I was able to use my knowledge to tip the scales in my favor little by little by little by little. But I can understand why people would think that the fight is extremely difficult, too difficult maybe, and for sure is frustrating. I remember my first two hours with Radan, it became frustrating. The second set of two hours, I grit my teeth and learned the fight. In the final two hours, we did a quick change. We did a quick change in equipment and we, um, and we beat it. But the question remains, and I need to think about this further. Are we reaching the limits of difficulty when it comes to soul bosses? Because I don't know how much more I can give this game. Not, well, I mean, this, this mechanical system. Like, Radon took everything out of me. I had to think. I had to dodge. The next step is obviously to use summons and to use other things that take away from the one-on-one -on -one experience that I like about the Souls games. I'm, I'm going to play the DLC a couple of more times with different characters. And I'm going to fucking use the Mimic. And I'm going to fucking summon every NPC. And I'm going to see how the experience difference is different. But my bottom line with Shadow of the Earth Tree is that it is magnificent. Incredibly good. And it is almost perfect. There's a couple of things that I don't like. One of them being the philosophy of the bosses. You got to do a lot of nothing in multiple boss fights. And that's hard to swallow, but I understand. We don't get a turn. We have to take our turn. And I understand the philosophy. I just don't really like it a lot. But we get through it. Like, we get through every single boss in every single game. We get through it. And then, the other thing I didn't like is... I feel like the overworld of Shadow of the Earth Tree was a little bit empty. Too many... Too many smithing stones... Too many crafting materials. And I understand why that happens. But a little bit... A little bit empty. I like the world because I like to see the world. I like the blue flowers of the coast of the Cerulean coast. I like... Jagged Peak was magnificent with the lightning coming down. Like there was a lot of good and a lot of environmental effects in the world. And I love that. But it was a little bit empty. Besides those two things, the philosophy of the bosses and the kind of emptiness of the world, I think the DLC was otherwise perfect. And at a $40 pri price tag, this is a fucking game. This isn't a DLC. This is a fucking blown, full-ass game. Like, there are, there are companies and publishers who would sell you Shadow of the Earth Tree for $70. But we got it for 40 The value is magnificent. And I loved every single hour I put into this game. With the good, with the bad, and with the ugly, I think Shadow of the Earth Tree is the absolute best DLC I've ever played since DLCs are a thing. Because Shadow of the Earth Tree is not a DLC. It's a fucking game. It's a huge expansion. And expansions are cool. $40 expansions that give you 40 hours of gameplay are fucking cool. And no one does that anymore. No one gives gamers that much value. And that needs to be commended. Shadow of the Earth Tree is absolutely magnificent. There are things I don't like with it. I will sit down, think about this, so I can probably make a couple of videos explaining my opinions with a bit more, you know, finesse and eloquence. But this is a top tier game, and this is, this is game of the year. We are in fucking July. By the time I beat this game, it's July, mid-July, and fuck my life, this is game of the year. And if it's not game of the year, it's because it didn't get nominated and we were robbed. But I don't think there's anything this year that can look at the eyes of Shadow of the Earth Tree and say I am better than you, because there isn't. To conclude the playthrough, I want to thank you, my dear viewer, for accompanying me. I want to thank you, my dear viewer, for watching, for being there with me, 
and for helping me beat the game. Each and every single one of you are part of this achievement. We did it without summons. We did it with the great hammer. We did it by learning the boss. In my opinion, this is the true souls experience and you were there to help me with it. That means a lot to me and I am tremendously grateful. My dear viewer, thank you very much for your time and I hope I get to see you on the next one.